Hi, I'm Steve. I'm going to walk you through creating a simple API in around 10 minutes, um, all the way from nothing to hosted on Heroku in that time. And it's going to be a really simple example based on sentiment analysis. So you get some numbers back from words, whether they're good or bad. I'm going to use these three frameworks. Grape is a, a simple framework for creating APIs on top of Ruby. Uh, Threescale will be used for authentication and we'll use Heroku for our, our hosting. If you're not familiar with Grape, then head over to GitHub and, and take a look at it. It allows you to define resources in a very simple way and then add methods and creates a REST API pretty much out of the box. There's a great example on the web page and we'll also create a new one during this, during this video. So to get started, I'm actually going to install the Grape gem. Uh, so sudo gem install, get that going. Um, if you're using Bundler, you can also use Bundler to do this and just have, uh, have the gem listed in your gem file. And uh, that'll give you the, the grape functionality. Grape's very similar to Sinatra um, and uh, runs as a rack application, so you'll also need to make sure you have the various rack components available. I'm also going to log into Heroku, um, which is our hosting environment. And to do this, you'll also need to head over to heroku.com and get yourself an account, a free account, and that'll get this stuff working. So here are the files that we have, a um, bunch of config files which we'll come back to. But the actual API is really just one file. So this is a, a Ruby file. You can see we're requiring grape. And this is v1 of the API because we're going to have a few different versions as we go down. The interesting thing is down here, we've got a resource which is defined, which is called words. And you can see two methods in it, a get and a post. And right now, they're just going to return the word back to you, essentially, as JSON. So it's very simple. We really have almost no functionality right now. And we'll build that out later on. There's another resource on sentences. Um, which we'll do some more fun stuff with in future videos. So this is really already defining the API. This is your Ruby file. And uh, uh, since it's a rack up, we also have a, a config file. So we're going to take a look at that. Just open our, our config.ru. So here we have, we're requiring that API, um, getting it to run, and then just um, running that. Uh, you can run that with um, exec rack up. But I'm going to use uh, Foreman, which is the uh, Heroku tool. I'm just going to start that up. So that should have started it on port 5000. And there you go. You can actually see we already have our API up and running. We've put the, the hello word in, because that's part of the, the way the, the API is called. And if I put a different word in, then I get a different word back. And so that's JSON being returned from the browser. And I want to get basically any word uh, off that word resource. And I can check the sentence works as well. Let's try a different sentence. Hello. Um, and there we go. And uh, both of those resources are already working. Um, now I can also test the post. Uh, so I'm going to use curl to do that. So this should also give me a response. And you can see I'm setting it as a post. There we go. The response comes back. So it's just a slightly different result. And later on, we'll do some fun stuff with that, like inserting new words into our sentiment table. So that's great. We already have the API running. So in theory, I could already deploy this to Heroku and have it running right now. But actually, I want to check who it is that's going to be using the API. So I want to make sure that only people I allow to use it can do that and track who they are. So I'm going to use 3Scale to do that. So I can go to 3Scale.net, create myself a new account, and that'll put in place a lot of management features that, uh, that, that I need. And once I've got that account, then I can start to um, configure what's going on. So here we go. Um, I'm going to sudo gem install 3Scale, which is the 3Scale client. I'm going to have that linked in my, into my application. So once we've got that running, I can start to just change the application slightly to make sure I put this authentication in place. So I'm going to put the 3Scale client in the require list. And you might also have it in your gem file if you're using Bundler. I'm going to make this version 2 of the API so we differentiate it from the first version that we had. And you can see these are the resources that we had. And um, I'm going to drop a couple of things in. So the first thing is an authentication object. So this is the object that can communicate with 3Scale's backend and allow me to do my authentication and checking. And there's also um, a helper that I'm going to create, which is called Authenticate, um, which I can call wherever I want to in the app. And this is going to take a couple of parameters, the app ID and the app key. It might just be a key, or you could put an open auth pattern or other things in here. Um, but those will be what we use to actually authenticate. And then I'm gonna, I'm I'm paranoid, so I'm gonna add actually the authenticate to all of the all of the different methods. I'm gonna make sure that I check that the right credentials are being used whenever any of those are, are being called. So um, 
Now, uh, to connect to 3Scale, I'll actually need to log into my 3Scale dashboard. And there's a lot of features in here which um, we won't talk about right now, but you can find out about them when, in the account and on the site. But I'm going to get the key for this account, um, which is right here, and grab that. And that's what I need to, to authenticate my app, uh, my API with the, with the backend. So I'm going to drop that into the provider key slot and save that out. So that now means that my, um, my uh, Grape app, my API is able to talk to 3Scale. Now let's change the app and actually run the new version of the API rather than the old one. So we change that over and save it out. I'm going to kill the previous process and restart. There we go. So restarted. Now back to the browser. So I'll find that basically v1 is not there anymore because I've killed it. Um, if I go to v2 now, I'm getting this 403 error because I'm not passing any credentials, so I'm not authorized to access the API anymore. So it's now behind a protection wall. So we're going to need to figure out how to access it. So to create new API keys, which are going to be valid on the API, you could um, then go into your 3Scale environment, and this creates a developer portal through which developers can sign up and get those credentials and have different rights assigned. Um, and you can determine exactly what it is that's going to be there. So I could, could make a lot of changes. But actually, I'm just going to cheat this time, and I'm going to go into my account and pick a, a sample app which has been created um, from the dashboard. So there's an identifier, and there's a key. Um, and I'm going to copy those out. So let me just add those to the URL. Obviously, you could pass these as well in the header, or you could pass them um, elsewhere. But we're just going to add them in a simple way into the URL. Let's grab the key as well. Get that in there. So okay, so now we have credentials, and there we go. So now we're able to talk to the API again with the right credentials and actually authenticate correctly. So I can just check that my other resources are working as well. Yep, they are. So I'm able to call both of them. And uh, I won't go and check the post, but I'm pretty confident that will work too. So now we're authenticated, and this is really the block of code that's made my API. My API is already running. It has authentication and checking. I can issue new developer keys. I can revoke the previous keys. And um, I can really uh, start to build out the actual functionality. Um, now, I've got this running locally, which is nice. But we said we want to get this running on Heroku as well. So I'm actually going to, um, first of all, I'm going to commit the code, um, which I've just done there. And then I'm going to push that to Heroku. So let's get push git push Heroku master, which is what we need to do. So what this is actually going to do is going to push it to our Heroku account and start the application on Heroku. So we can see it's pulling together the various things that are listed in the gem file that it requires, putting them together and building them, and checking that everything's running. So just setting those things up, and checking process types. Should be launching the, the, the process. Uh, OK, so we should be done. Um, we should probably better just check that the process is running. So I'm going to do that, Heroku PS. Um, yep, we are. So if I run Heroku open, it should take me to the browser and actually take me to the app. And there we go. The app's there. It's telling me there's nothing found, but that's because there's no nothing on the root of the API. So I'm going to have to go in and actually type uh, some, some URL that's valid. And there we go. We have our unauthorized, so it's telling us we're not authorized. I'll have to get my keys again, so I'm going to grab those, the same ones I was using before. Now both be valid. And there we go. That's our API, and it's running on Heroku. And we've done that in under 10 minutes. Um, and have it, have it secure and have it all managed, which is, which is great. So really, from here on in, there's tons of things we can do. We can add analytics. We can add new methods. We can change the output types and... Um, basically have a fully functioning API and I can check all the different resources and make sure that they're working. So there we have it. That's a fully functioning API in less than 10 minutes using these frameworks. So head over to those URLs and check them out and um, hope you have a good time recreating it and doing other cool stuff. Thanks very much.